Okay, welcome to chapter one. We are going to review some concepts that you've learned before that will help you in chapter one. So the first thing is simplifying expressions. You might remember the terms are the, you know, ideas of math or the concepts called combining like terms. Um, that's exactly what we'll be doing when we simplify expressions. So they're not equations, there's no equal sign, and what you'll do is simply group terms together um, to be like terms. They have to have the same variable raised to the same power or be a constant, which is just a number with no variable. The most important thing to remember in doing this is that uh, we are dealing with numbers that have signs. So the mathematical operation before the number becomes the sign of the number. So you may or may not have done it. So this example one uh, takes the original expression right here, and then it uses the commutative property to rearrange the expressions so that the ones that are like terms are together. So you can see the first two have a variable of b, and the second two are just numbers. When you're looking at the original um, expression, one way, or you may have been shown this before, is you could circle the like term. So the first expression had a b, so I find anything else with a b and I circle it. The next expression is just a constant or a number, and so I box it in. And note that when I'm circling and boxing, I'm including this, the operation before it because that helps me to understand the sign of the number. If you need to, you can put little plus signs between all these because by keeping this, the operation with the number, that becomes the sign of the number, and then you would just simply be adding them. So in this case, then, we could come down here. What they've done is they've taken... Uh, this 10b and negative 6b. So 10 plus negative 6 is a positive 4. And then 13 plus 4. So I've overwritten their work with the purple pen, and that could show you another way to show your work and communicate it. Um, the answer is simply 4b plus 17. There is no need to combine those any further because they are not like terms. So you will be left with what is called an expression. Okay, looking at example two, we see the parentheses. This means we need to distribute. You take the number outside and you can draw arrows to show that you're distributing and then you will be taking five times x plus five times four and then you keep the last part of the expression. When you get to this third step right here, after you've multiplied, you have your combining like terms if you like to box and circle, okay? So when you take your 5x and your 2x, they will simplify to 7x and simply bring down the other part of it, 7x plus 20. It's your turn to practice. So looking at the very first one, I see that there's a 9m, a negative 7m, and a 2m. Remember, we are just going to be combining the like terms. All three of them have the variable term m. Sometimes when you have, you can go left to right for sure. So we could take the 9 and the negative 7 and, and combine them. Sometimes I like to group the signs together. So I have a positive 9 and a positive 2, which makes for a positive 11. And then I have a positive 11, so 11m minus 7m can be combined further to give us simply 4m. Okay, but you could definitely go left to right. That would work as well. So you just might be adding or subtracting in there. Looking at example two or trying some number two, combine 3g with 11g and negative 9 and negative 21. So 3 plus 11 is 15. Oops, sorry about that. There's one of those mistakes. Would be 14g. And when we add the negative 9 and the negative 21, we get negative 30 as our final simplified. In example 3, or the third problem, you'll be distributing. So 6 times 3 is 18. 6 times a negative y is negative 6y. And there's our simplified expression. For 4, again, distributing 12 a minus 48. 
When we get to 5, we, have, we see the parentheses, and what's in front of the parentheses is this positive 7. So always pay attention to the sign of the number in front of it. Sometimes it's a negative. All right, so we'll have a mid-step here. We have to take the 22.5, and then we have plus 7n, and then minus. And when we take um, 7 times this uh, 3.4, we get 23.8, so minus 23.8. All right. So the, the like terms are right here, the two constants. All right. So um, we have a positive 22.5 plus a negative. So sometimes it's good to see the circles, too. So you can see that that's a negative. Okay. So we need to find the difference. So we will subtract 22.5 from 23.8. The difference is 1.3, and it'll be a negative 1.3 because of the, so negative 1.3 plus 7n, and that's perfectly fine. You could also have put the 7n down first and put minus 1.3. But the 1.3 is negative because the highest absolute value is the 23.8. It's the farthest from 0, so it's going to keep that negative. Okay, again, this time we are distributing a positive 8. So 15k plus 88 minus 8k, almost falling off here. So the 15 and the negative 8, so we get 7k plus 88 for our simplified expression. All right, in adding and subtracting integers, it's most important to remember the integer rules. So in addition, um, if they are like signs, you will simply add them and keep the sign. If they are unlike signs, you actually are subtracting or finding the difference between the two numbers and then keeping the sign of the one with the highest absolute value. In subtraction, it's always good to um, rewrite it as an addition problem so that you're dealing with that subtraction sign acting as a negative sign. Um, you might refer to the term boom booms, right? So do the boom boom so that you can put it in the right shape before, so you know if you're adding or subtracting. So example three, four plus a negative 12. So it tells you that you are subtracting four from the 12 or the absolute values of those numbers and then using the sign. So the answer is negative eight. In example four, we have a negative seven minus the negative 16. So we're going to be adding the opposite of negative 16 or adding 16 negative 7 plus 16, positive, negative. We still subtract, which is 9, and keep it positive because 16 has the highest absolute value. So in trying it for yourself, we have two negatives that we are adding, so we actually get to add the absolute values, and the answer would be negative 7 because you keep the negative sign. In number 8, 0 plus the negative 13. In this case, it's like the identity property of addition. Anything plus 0 is itself, so the answer would be negative 13. In number 9, we have um, a positive number over here, the 14, and a negative number, the negative 6. So when we're adding them, we're going to subtract. We will take 6 away from 14. The answer is 8. It remains positive because 14 is farthest from 0. In number 10, we have this double negative in the middle, so it's really a good idea to change that to a positive and then change the sign of the next number. So you really have 19 plus 13, or 32.